Today I'm sharing with you 10 life lessons that I've learned from my last 15 years working in the dating industry. And I think the one thing that I'm kind of hoping uh, that you, the viewer, does with these things is that you absorb them into your, your dating life or the time that you're spending maybe being in a dating community that you really do heed my lessons and I just know and hope that they do make a difference for you. So let's get started with number one. Back in 2009, I was introduced to Neil Strauss's book. And like most people, it was a, a life-changing book that just taught you wherever and whoever you are in your life, you can actively change your life to whatever you want it to be. And it never suggested that you uh, only had to like close your eyes and dream this to be true the next day. You obviously had to take action and uh, responsibility for your life to create those results. But I remember growing up, I mean, I was, I was ridiculously shy and I used to just have an addiction to playing PlayStation games because it was just easier than to socialize and meet new people and, and, and it was safer as well. And I definitely had like women who were interested uh, in me growing up as well, but I was just too shy to do anything about it. And then when it got to a certain point, it just felt like I'd missed out on just so many like opportunities growing up. But when I got introduced to Neil Strauss's book, it just, it, it blew me away. Just this idea that if you practice talking to women, you will obviously get better with women and you'll get to a point that you'll just be comfortable and have no issues with dating and that you just have to put in that hard grasp to get whatever results you want in life. So as my first lesson to you, I want you to uh, accept that as a mindset or as a positive idea that it doesn't matter where you are in life. It doesn't matter if you're already in the dating community or not. The fact is that if you aren't happy with something, you only have to do something about it. Take action, be accountable for it, and certainly take responsibility for your actions. And you can achieve whatever kind of dreams or, or results or goals that you want, uh, obviously within reason. But then again, you know, who's to say if you want to become an Olympian, train as hard as hell for it. And maybe I will see you at the next Olympics. But joking aside, the main lesson here is that it doesn't matter how bad your life has been. If you've been unhappy, if you've been lonely and you are stuck in that routine of it, just remember that at any moment, even this very moment now you watching this video, you can change your, your entire reality but you have to be willing to accept that responsibility and do something about it. And if you can't do it on your own, especially in dating, then go and see a dating coach. Let them take you out and give you the support that you need to develop the skills so you can form connections and relationships with people, which is just what um, this is all about. So that is my first lesson for you. So, a problem when guys have spent too much time on their own or if they haven't had the right kind of uh, support system, so like friends and family, or maybe they just don't have any friends uh, or sadly family, then they don't have a, a support system that overwrites their own thought process. And when you've got guys who have spent a lot of time on their own, they develop a lot of limiting beliefs about themselves. And, and it can happen a number of ways. Maybe they've actually tried to do stuff and things have gone horribly wrong, or they've been made to feel embarrassed or ashamed about doing something, or they've just been scared to do it in the first place. And because they've avoided um, taking action with something for so long, they just develop that belief like, oh, I can't do it. No, this is, this is the way of life. This is how things have to be and things can't change. And that's, 
that that last bit things can't change tends to be the belief that a lot of people have that they just believe that they are stuck in this routine and that's that they have to accept their fate and destiny with it and that things will never be any different for them if they haven't had a girlfriend up until the age of 30 or something then they never will have a girlfriend and they just have to accept that and it's just a terrible way of being and how saddening as well that you out of all people would put yourself down so my first well not even first my second lesson for you with this is that i want you to believe that you are better than what you think you are that you can't trust your own judgment or value sometimes and you have to certainly accept that maybe you need another perspective um, brought into your uh, your thought processes um, and again it's why like people go to coaches because you know they don't trust themselves or they don't they, they come to a realization that actually maybe their limiting beliefs are a lie it's trying to keep them safe and in some like really small uh, claustrophobic box and that they uh, can't get out of it and actually they just need someone to show them no this is what's possible and in fact even adding on to this point you know if other people can do it you certainly can too but it really is about taking responsibility for your actions but you aren't as bad as you think you are with stuff i've known guys and and i think even i definitely had experienced this myself where i thought oh it's not possible to do this i can't do that i, I don't know what to say to to uh, uh, an attractive woman and stuff and then when you're having a couple of conversations or when you talk go into a couple of approaches suddenly you find your rhythm and then you'll walk away going like oh that actually wasn't that bad i'm still alive you know and and you're just you're just fine and then you realize what was i worrying about what was all the stress over and the more you end up doing stuff then obviously the more reference experience or positive stuff you'll get and that will just well and truly show you that you really aren't as bad as you think you are but sometimes you need uh, an extra bit of support to show you that. You know what is funny? How many guys just don't put in the hard work to try and achieve their results. Um, they don't like to admit, maybe it's like pride or ego or whatever, but they don't like the idea of having their hand held with something that they can do it all on their own. But when it comes, when push comes to shove and they actually need to take action on something, they just delay it. They're like, oh, I'll do it tomorrow. Or like, oh no, I've got more important things to do. And uh, and then yet they'll, they'll carry on complaining about all the problems that they've got um, in life. And like with anything, even the people who have like formed businesses or, you know, have gone, uh, become actors or musicians and stuff, you know, they have put in countless hours of dedication to skills that they wanted to develop. And this is my next lesson for you is that if you want to get good at anything, you have to practice, practice, practice. You can't just do something for a little bit and then stop and be like oh it didn't work you have to really dedicate a lot of time to it and with a lot of guys and, and even for me again over the years I, I experienced this um with dating you're obviously having to work on a lot of social skills you've got to work on social intelligence conversation skills uh also how to have attractive behaviors take place when you are talking to women and i'm strategically saying that because it can be so many things from like flirting to sub communication to body language to posture even uh even things like eye contact and pausing with you, you and when you're talking um you have to develop all of that and the thing is is that a lot of people had learned all of this from a young age that it's just second nature to them they didn't have to go and watch YouTube videos on how to fix things in their life. They were just brought up in environments that gave them all the nourishment and the support that they needed and the uh, the ability even just to, to take risks and try doing something and experiment themselves to see what kind of outcomes and results that they would get. 
And that is really what builds confidence. And the more people can do things that they want to do, the more they take action uh, on the skill sets they're developing, then of course it's going to just improve as you become more competent with it. So like I uh, remember years ago, I used to do windsurfing and then I had kind of developed this, this, uh, this taste for doing extreme sports every year. Um, and I absolutely loved windsurfing. And I remember like the first time I went on a board, I was terrible at it. I couldn't pick the sail up. It was heavy as soon as the water gone on it. And it was, it was just, I couldn't get my balance right. It was hilarious. But did that stop me from going on that board again every time I fell off? Absolutely not. I got back on it. I tried it again. And eventually I was able to pick the sail up. And I might have been standing there floating on the lake for a long period of time, but eventually I then got used to the technique with the sail and moving and positioning myself on the board that then by the end of the week of constantly eight, 10 hour days on the water, I got really good. And I was able to start going back and forth across the lake doing it. And I loved it. I loved every moment of it. And in fact, thinking about it, I'll have to certainly get back into it again. But point being is that if you want to get good at something, you have to spend time on it. Um, and for guys who get into the dating world uh, or the dating communities and they go out and practice cold approaching, you can't just do like a couple of hours and then go, oh, this didn't work for me. Unfortunately, you have to do it very regularly and you have to uh, give it time and patience as well. You're also doing something that is the most uh, extreme against the social norm thing uh, as well. So, you know, where we're just naturally trained, especially in London, not to hold eye contact with strangers. And there you are now having to like learn how to hold eye contact with strangers. Yeah, you're gonna, you're gonna struggle. You're gonna be fighting against ideologies that you've been brought up to believe, you know, but you have to train yourself. Practice makes perfect. And, you know, even with people who do like martial arts and stuff, you don't just become uh, a black belt after a week of training. It takes years to get that. You have to level up. You have to prove yourself in fights. You have to do choreographed um, uh, kung fu moves uh, until you uh, are allowed to progress to the next belt. So just bear in mind for my lesson here is that you know if you want to get good at something, you've got to put the time into it and you have to expect that at the start, it's going to be slow, but if you stick with it, eventually you'll get better. I do remember, especially before I got into the dating community, I remember believing that I just didn't deserve love, um, that I would just never have a girlfriend. I would probably never get married. I'd never have kids, even though I, I so badly wanted all of that. And I just felt that it would be unreachable, that I would never get it. And I have met so many men who've said the same thing, that they just want to be happy. They want to settle down. They just don't want to feel alone. And they want to feel loved as well as be able to give love back. And this this isn't really spoken about enough, I don't think, in the dating community. It's always about like like sleep with women this and sleep with women that. But you know, I'd easily say like ninety plus percent of men who enter the dating community, they want to get married. They want relationships. They aren't bothered about having one night stands. They haven't got the patience for it. They don't want to be walking around on the street all the time. They want to just develop those social skills to get to a point that if they see someone that they're attracted to, they don't miss out on the opportunity of trying rather than saying like, oh, what if I'd have done that? So guys, it's absolutely okay. If you want love and happiness, just know everyone else wants it too. Um, it's again, not spoken about in this industry enough, I don't think, because unfortunately it just doesn't sell, 
uh, seats on coaching uh, courses, you know, but most men want relationships. And what's funny is as soon as they find those relationships, they are instantly out of the dating community. They just leave it within a heartbeat. They, they're they not sticking around in it. And it's funny because they, I there's, there's so many men that claim that they've made all these friendships and stuff, but as soon as they got into a relationship, whether it be them or their friend, vanished, gone without a trace. So if you're looking for love and happiness um, and connections with people, that this is, you know, this is such a great way to, to develop that skill, especially if you're not going to rely on it forever, believe it or not. But once you've got into a relationship, my goodness, people hold on to that like they are clutching straws. They do whatever they can to be like the best boyfriend or future husband that they can be. Um, because the reality is, is that, that that's, that's the main thing that they want. They don't want to be staying in a dating community forever. And most men want to get in and then get out as soon as they possibly can. So if that's you, you're not alone. So many men want the same thing as you. I think one of the reasons why people who do like day games, street approaching, cold approach, day, night, whatever, why it's so successful is because the truth is, is that everyone, women included, are so unhappy with their dating lives. They want more excitement, they want more adventure, and they want a more confident guy to come in and sweep them off their feet and uh, just show them a good experience. And it's why I think, yes, so many guys do well because people want to connect. They want to form some kind of uh, friendship or relationship with people because they just don't do it enough. And I think way too many people are lonely or at least there's uh, a... Um, there's sort of like an epidemic of it in in London that people are just very lonely and it's a sad life to live and that the fact that it just takes someone literally to come over give you a compliment and then your entire life is just turned around and why would you turn that down you know it's again it's just why I, I want guys if anything to just bear in mind that, you know, you have such a great power and, well, to quote quote Spider-Man here, you know, with great power comes great responsibility, that you have this skill of being able to talk to women in the most, um, I suppose, unconditional of circumstances. And if you're sweeping them off their feet, to them, it's it's such a magical experience. And I want guys to just remember that and not take that for granted because if you do you'll find that you'll be leaving people worse off rather than better off and it can also be kind of damaging I think for yourself as well um it's what does turn people I think maybe a bit too narcissistic or um or sociopathic you know and and certainly we don't want that I want people to have great relationships so be aware of just how great of a connection that you are creating with people because of such a sociable skill that you're using in the most ballsiest of environments that no one else would even dare to do. And here you are strolling in, talking to a stranger, giving them compliments, stating that you're attracted to them and you're trying to get to know them better to see where things can go. Uh, and everyone's adults here for what happens next is obviously up to them. But just remember, you have full control over that situation and don't take that for granted. And uh, certainly also don't neglect that skill either. Unfortunately, there are a lot of vulnerable guys in the dating community. And, you know, and it's unsurprising when you've got guys who just don't tend to have a lot of social skills They are putting a lot of trust in men who are incredibly confident, but sometimes they're putting the trust in with the wrong people. Now, it's not my place to say who's a good coach and who's a bad coach. Um, I'll 
leave that out in this video, but it is important to know that sometimes coaches can act like they have the best intentions for you, or they want you to believe a certain ideology which they feel is right, but it's right for them, it's not for you. Like I've known guys who they want relationships, but coaches have said to them like, no, you should be single. Single, being single is the better life to be. And eventually they kind of get sort of weaned out of wanting to have relationships. And then later on, they kind of regret that. They're like, I, I, I can date women. I can, you know, form lots of stuff with them, but I just don't know how to keep them. Um, I'm, I'm really lost. And I've had that conversation with people and I've said to them like, well, you know, you're going to have to change your ways with, with things. You can't be living this playboy, uh, Lothario, I think that's the right word, uh, lifestyle. You know, you're going to have to make some changes if you want to be able to have more long-term relationships rather than a one night thing. So don't get me wrong. I mean, everyone's beliefs change over time as well. You know, everyone kind of has this pendulum of they want one thing and then once they've tried something else now, now they want that and then they try something else and then they want this and then it kind of swings back. You know, it, it happens. It's normal. It's part of life. But having, having an idea of what you want and standing by that is an important thing. If you want to have a relationship then make sure that is clear with coaches or people that you're surrounding yourself with. If you're being around guys that just want the single life and they are telling you like, no, don't, don't be a loser for wanting that or this and that, whatever, they're, they're not really going to be the right support system for you. And don't be afraid to walk away from coaches or other guys if their beliefs or ideologies are very different to yours. Like, I want guys to be happy and I want them to have relationships. That is my belief that's also what I want. Now, there will be guys who just want the single life. I can give them advice on things. That's not a problem. But I'm going to be more uh, a person who will resonate more with people who want relationships. And I know that they will do the same for me. So stick to your guns with what you want out of dating. Don't let other people influence you otherwise. If you want to dabble and try other things, then go for it. But Decide what you want to do and don't let people persuade you to want something else. Because even with coaches, I've known coaches who have swayed people into coaching programs that weren't for them all because they were trying to sell some belief. And again, and I, I disagree with that. So stick to your guns, stick with what you want out of dating and work hard towards that. So this one's kind of obvious, I think, when it comes to watching like dating coaches on YouTube, that they have their own way of talking to the women uh, that they're, they're in the approaches with. And for a lot of guys, the thing is, is that you can copy the lines and routines from the coaches in YouTube videos or online courses or whatever, but it's their lines, it's not yours. So if you do wanna get really good with developing your conversation skills and your confidence and even your improv, like thinking on the spot of what to say, then you have to find your own way of talking to people. And you're not gonna have the same conversation with every single person that you meet either. And that's normal, it's great to have very different conversations from each other you're not going to want to have the same conversation over and over. You're going to become so desensitized to it and bored of it that it's just not going to be as exciting for you as it was before. So don't rely on using like lines on routines from coaches that you're watching online. Yes, their stuff might be a crutch. If you're a complete beginner, you know, take that feedback on board and be like, okay, I don't know what to say in this circumstance. Oh, you know what? I will use what that coach said uh, as an opener. That's that's fine. But after a while, don't rely on it. Develop something that you want to say. What did you notice about a woman when you before you went over to talk to her? What was going on in the environment that you could strike up a conversation with someone who else is there? You know, if you want to give someone a compliment give them a compliment that's meaningful from you, 
not because of something that you've heard from someone else that'd be like, oh, well, that, that, that will get a good result. Uh, I know it. You, you don't want that. You want to bring out your authenticity and you'll feel more confident in that. And in fact, I think the women will feel that as well. Um, I genuinely believe women have a sixth sense when it comes to knowing what men want from them. And even the energy that a guy can give off if he's either confident or anxious or whatever, you know. So speak your mind and she will feel that energy from you. If you're nervous and you say, you know what, to be honest, I, I find you really attractive, but I am nervous. I don't normally do this thing. She'll feel that energy and honesty and she will appreciate that. She'll give you the time of day or most will. And it's the same if you've got a really confident guy who's very direct, maybe he can, you know, he's done it so much that he can bring in those sexual tones and, you know, he's good at eye contact and slow speaking. A woman's going to feel that. And that might resonate with uh, some women and not with others, but for the ones that that does resonate with, then fireworks are going to go off. They'll he'll, they'll get results, but that's all because he's saying things that are meaningful to him. So my lesson for this one is: I want you to develop your own way of talking. It's fine if you're going to use other people's stuff as a crutch to start off with, but don't be reliant on it. Um, you don't want every guy going out, talking to people, saying the exact same thing. It, it's too robotic. It sounds absolutely ridiculous. And trust me, back in the day when the day game blueprint was in existence, which bear in mind, every coach pretty much is using to this day. Um, I remember there was a time when everyone was hitting the streets and saying, excuse me, can I tell you something really quickly? What I noticed about you was X, Y, Z. And it was just ridiculous. The amount of, I heard that hundreds, if not thousands of times when filming with clients with my earphones in. And I remember just rolling my eyes going, here we go again. Here we go again. Here's the same line over and over. Be unique, be a bit different, please. I'm begging you. And you will just have so many more unique conversations. If you're more funny, have more funny interactions. If you're more seductive, be more seductive. If you're more uh, comical or serious or anxious, you know, go with it. But, you know, evolve your conversations. And I can assure you, you'll be more confident as time goes on anyway. Uh, and you'll be more confident with your delivery of you speaking, but find your own way of doing things and you'll get much better results with women. So this actually happened to me many years ago and I actually had to have a break from the, uh, the dating industry for about seven, eight months because of it. At the start in 2009, after I got introduced to the, the pickup world and, and the dating community and stuff, I remember being obsessed with the idea of the perfect approach, the right angle to go in, where to look, what to say, what opener to use, how to transition the conversation. It was way too calculated. And the more I kept trying to learn theory and absorbing stuff, it actually got to a point that I couldn't talk to people. I was overthinking my conversations like 50 steps before I'd even gone into talking to someone. And it actually became also very difficult to talk to friends and family as well because of it, because of just how calculated it was becoming. So I actually had to have then a break away, normalize myself to then realize I don't need to be learning all this theory. So my advice for you really here, and don't get me wrong, learn theory, but don't get absorbed by it. Get an understanding and an idea of how attraction works. See what video proof that you need to justify, I can do this, I should go out and try this myself. But more importantly, it's about experiential training. The more you can go out and practice doing this stuff, then that is where you will develop your skill. You don't need to be sitting watching like lectures online and signing up to every kind of online course and video series possible. Everything's on YouTube for you to watch to just prove what is possible with doing street approaching or uh, or uh, doing day game and cold approach. But if you get too consumed in the theory, you're going to overthink doing stuff. You don't need to think what angle you're going to come in and, and talk to women. You just 
go over. You know, in, in my, my attitude has always been like, imagine they've dropped a wallet or someone's dropped a wallet. You pick it up. How would you go and give it back to them? You would literally just run over, go and stop them with conviction and be like, excuse me, you've just dropped your wallet. I had to let you know. That is literally the mentality you only need. And then you go and actively do it. And you will find you'll be a natural with it. And it's the same with conversations. People think, oh, I have to go in. I have to talk about this topic and that topic and that topic. You don't. Again, every conversation is very different. So one girl you might talk about dance and another one might talk about music you're going to have very different conversations with that. There's no point talking, well, you might talk about music with the ballerina, but you're not going to end up talking about that with the person who maybe plays the saxophone or whatever, or plays violin or guitar or something. So just remember that you can inadvertently make your, uh, your social skills and conversation skills worse if you over theorize all of your content by just trying to learn too much and not accepting that, you know what, I need to just go out and actively experience uh, these skills that I want to develop. And again, working with a, a dating coach, working with a life coach or something is a great way to take that responsibility with going out and being pushed into these approaches, getting the support and getting the feedback Right, you said it like this, but you know what? You need to say this a bit differently. So my lesson for you here is just be wary that you can overlearn theory and you can make uh, your social skills a lot worse than they have to be. And that the only way then to normalize yourself again is you're going to have to have a break from everything. So if you recognize that you're going through that now, have a break. There's nothing wrong with having a break. The dating world will still be here when you come back. But if you can recognize early on, it's more about experiential training than uh, absorbing just information upon information from coaches nonstop and just getting hundreds upon out hundreds of hours. That That's not going to benefit you at all. Just see that the proof is possible to go out and talk to people and then go out and do it. So this lesson is more about short-term and long-term planning, really, with uh, having a dating life um, and how much time people think that they've got to try and make all these changes. Like when you get a taste of getting good results, I think, with uh, with dating women, especially if it's women that were more, more attractive than what you're probably used to, then there is obviously a euphoria attached to that as well. And guys then think I have to get really good fast so I can then go out and and have even better dates and meet even more attractive women and, and so on. But the lesson here is that there is no rush to it. The fact that you are doing something about your life uh, in a more positive way, you're taking action, you're being responsible and holding yourself accountable. I love those three words. Then you're going to get results and you've got your entire life ahead of you to, uh, to worry about that. And if you're going to try and do everything in the short term, have like a sabbatical from work and friends and family and stuff and just dedicate a, a small period of time, a couple of months maybe, working on doing cold approaching, but then going back to your normal life afterwards. Or if you're doing more long-term stuff, just go out on a regular basis. If not just practicing street approaching and cold approach that way, put yourself in social environments, do something about it. And again, you've got dating coaches in the world who will go to all of these locations with you. The best coaches can do coaching with you in every environment, not just on the street. So just bear this in mind. I mean, this is, this is kind of a nice, simple lesson anyway, but you do have all of the time in the world to work on your dating life. There's no rush for it. I'm just glad that more, if anything, that you're taking action with it now. Um, and even if, you know, you're maybe 50, 60 years old and you're uh, you're working on your dating life, then yeah, maybe there might be a bit more of a, <laughs> a, time, uh, a time limit on it. But just go out, just be sociable, um, have fun and enjoy your interactions. And don't stress too much about trying to throw yourself in the deep end. But if you do have an exit strategy and remember that you've got 
all the time in the world. You've got years ahead of you from guys who are like 18 years old to guys who are like in their 50s, 60s. You've got your whole life ahead of you to be more confident, to be more sociable and to have a date in life that you're going to be happy with and what you want. And this last one is one that actually means um, uh, a lot to me. And that is that I want you to uh, find out the last name of the uh, the guys that you are spending time with because one day you might regret it. So this industry, I mean, a lot of guys, they go out, they'll hang out with each other and they'll do approaches and they don't tend to form friendships. And I think that's kind of really a sad thing. But for those that do form a friendship, you are creating such lifelong bonds with each other. You're spending time with each other. If you've got other things in common besides just dating women, um, I mean, it's amazing to think that guys have come together and they've been able to form friendships. And I've got friends like that, that I've met through the industry who I will be friends with for the rest of my life. We've gotten on so well. Uh, two of, in fact, two of them are both happily in relationships and they're most likely going to get, get married. They've been in them for a couple of years. And it's just amazing that it's because of the skills that they learn through dating. But my point here is that one of my friends, uh, he kept on in, in our group who would go out and do the street approaching with, he'd have like silences for months at a time. So he'd be with us and then he'd disappear for a while and then he'd come back and then he'd disappear for a while. And it was always strange because you never also know what is going on with guys um, in their own lives outside of the dating community. And for a long while, he'd disappeared, he'd, he'd gone and then uh, he'd been working. Well, in fact, um, the, the guy had actually been working with a dating coach and there are videos of him online. And it became apparent from a comment underneath one of the videos that they'd said, rest in peace. And they said uh, my friend's name. And I remember calling up my two best friends and saying, like, what, what's going on? This doesn't, what, what do they mean? Rest in peace. Our, our friends are all right, isn't he? And we couldn't reach the guy, uh, our, our friend who'd gone missing. And it turned out that he'd committed suicide. And not only that, but he'd committed suicide about a month ago, a month before we'd even found out that he'd already been buried. And we wanted to try and reach out to his family to find out what went on. He wasn't on any social media. And we also didn't know his last name. And it took weeks upon weeks until we were able to track down um, his, uh, I think it was his mum, I think we got hold of. And then she said the story that, yeah, unfortunately had uh, some mental health problems going on and he took his own life. And, and we were just devastated because we felt that we could have done more to support him if we had known more what was going on and also because he just had no online presence and we didn't even know his last name, we couldn't even get to him in time or even be there for the funeral. And, and that was what was really heartbreaking about it. So if you're coming into the dating community or being in it for a while and you've got friends in it, don't forget that these are also human beings that you're spending time with. These are people who have lives going on outside of just trying to chase women or develop social skills. So find out about them. Let them be your best friend and vice versa. And be supportive of each other. Try and be there for each other through the highs and lows. It's okay to be vulnerable with your closest friends because you, if you certainly can't be vulnerable with anyone else, be open and honest with them about stuff. If you've got problems or personal things going on, let them be there for you. Don't suffer on your own or don't let other people suffer. Be as supportive as you can. Create those friendships. And, you know, and I'm going to try not to be too emotional with this, but, you know, my, my lesson though is just make sure that you know the people that you're spending time with and be there not just for dating, but be there for everything else in their lives. That is what this community should be about. That is where 
this makes for a great reason for people to come together supporting men with their mental health as well as with their social skills and confidence so i'd love to hear your thoughts on this video and i really do hope that you um take all of my advice advice on board with this i know this is a long video anyway but um i really hope that you know it makes changes for you. It changes your limiting beliefs. It changes how you spend time with the people that you surround yourself with in the dating community. You know, I want you to get good results. I want you to be happy. Um, and I want you to find what you want uh, in it as well. So I'd love to hear your thoughts underneath this video um, uh, about maybe if there's any of these that uh, apply to you or maybe you've got a favorite run. Uh, entirely up to you, but I'd love to, I'd love to hear and if you can like and subscribe to the channel, um, all your support that you're able to give just helps my channel to grow and uh, reach more men and help them with their confidence and anxiety as well. And I want them to, you know, find that uh, confidence in um, seeing the dating industry is really isn't that bad and that it does help men um, who need it the most. So thank you so much for watching this video. And I hope my 10 lessons really does help you to find what you want in the, uh, in the dating world.